Good morning, dear friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, Rochester, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. People exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our redemption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, 
just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you ever notice that there is a pattern in these resurrection appearances of Jesus? The disciples are gathered together somewhere, and Jesus comes and stands among them. Or maybe they're walking along the road to Emmaus, and he begins to walk beside them. Sometimes they are fishing, and Jesus appears on the shore and prepares a picnic breakfast for them. This presence of the resurrected Christ becomes one of the strong gospel witnesses that Jesus was not merely a ghost. He was not a hallucination. He was not a figment of their imagination. He was really, truly risen from the dead. Faith in Jesus would probably be easier for us if he did for us what he did for his disciples. And I suspect that, like the disciples, we too would be startled, although I hope not terrified, If the risen Lord were to stand here in our midst today and say, peace be with you, what a privilege it would be if the risen Lord were to walk up and down the aisles of this church, inviting us to look at his hands and feet, telling us to touch his side. But we do not have to imagine what it would be like to encounter the risen Jesus. We believe that the risen Jesus is in our midst, right here and right now. One of the most important insights of the fathers of the Second Vatican Council was to remind us of the various ways that Christ is present when we gather for the Eucharist. He is present when the scriptures are proclaimed. In other words, Jesus has just been speaking directly to us in these readings. He is present in the community that gathers, each of us being Christ for others and together making visible the body of Christ, which is the church. He is present in the person of the priest who presides at the sacrifice so that what we do here is not just an exercise in memory, but a participation in the very sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And finally, of course, he is present in the bread and wine that are transformed into the body and blood of Christ and which we receive as a sign of our communion. Yes, the risen Jesus is truly with us here and now. In fact, I think that in some ways we have an advantage over the disciples. Jesus does something for us far more important and far more permanent than what he was able to do for the disciples that first Easter. If Jesus had shown us his wounded hands and feet, if he had let us touch him, if he had eaten some food in front of us, those actions would be temporary, passing deeds, finished in a matter of moments. We might wish that the risen Jesus would be with us in a more enduring way, and he is. The disciples had a unique experience of the risen Jesus as they encountered him in his resurrected body. Our own experience of the risen Lord is no less powerful. Jesus' ascension into heaven 
did not bring an end to his presence in our world, only to his bodily presence. He continues to be with us in the ways expressed by the Second Vatican Council, but in a multitude of other ways as well. In our readings for this weekend, one concept moves to center stage, to know. To know Jesus is not to know things about him, but to be in a relationship with him. Our second reading lets us know that to know him is to be in him, to abide in him. It is his presence in us and our presence in him that brings about eternal life. In the Gospels, the disciples to whom Jesus appeared often did not recognize him until they recognized him in the breaking of bread. When we come to this table where we break the bread, we come into intimate contact with the risen one. And I find it interesting that after he is revealed in the breaking of bread, Jesus usually disappears. It's as if to say that it is not the physical presence of Jesus limited by time and place in his body, that is most important. Rather, it is his ongoing sacramental presence which draws us ever deeper into relationship with him. It was true for the disciples, and it is true for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, 
Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. If this Mass has helped you or someone you know, please consider sending a donation to the address on the screen or by visiting our website at dowr.org and clicking the weekly Mass icon. Thank you and God bless.